My name is Anthony McQuinn and I'm graduating from the Global Impact STEM Academy in class of 2020. I'm Lahayla Black and I'm graduating from Beaver Creek High School. Jane Nurse and I'm actually a homeschooler so I'm kind of graduating from home but also from Clark State where I took a bunch of gen eds the last couple years. My name is Lucas Davis and I'm graduating from Shawnee High School. My name is Carly Smith and I'm graduating from Northwestern High School. My name is Michael Hollingstead and I graduated from Springfield High School. I'm Seth Potts and I was a homeschool senior, a part-time student at ECA and I took a lot of CCP classes at Clark State. I am Kyla Tuttle, graduating from Southeastern High School. Tyler Gabriel, I'm graduating from Springfield Clark CTC. My name is Madeline Fansler and I'm graduating from Kenton Ridge High School. So I'm Jones, graduating from technically three different places. Graduating from homeschool, graduating from CTC, and I'm graduating from uh, ECA. Plans for after graduation, I plan to attend Taylor University, which is in Upland, Indiana, and I'm going to be majoring in marketing and then a minor in uh, strategic communications. And I will be attending Kent State University for a major in music education. My plans immediately following high school is like take a chill out for a little bit and then start contacting places, uh, any car dealership of some sort just to like take photos of their new inventory so they don't have to worry about that at the dealership. Just gonna try and go to college, use my scholarship, try and join up at the fire station. I plan to go to Wittenberg University and major in psychology in hopes of becoming a child life specialist. Um, I plan on going to Mount Vernon Nazarene University and studying business finance with a minor in personal finance. Plans after graduation are to continue to pursue my career in power sports technician. I'm attending Wright State University and I'm going in undecided. My plan right now is to take a gap year and then go to Clark State for an engineering class to get a two-year certificate. I am going to continue at Clark State um, for social work. In the fall, I'm going to the University of Cincinnati to study business. So the biggest difference in my faith from the child to now is owning my faith. Uh, when I was a kid, it was more my parents' faith. You know, they'd say something and be like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I believe that. But then, um, you know, progressing through high school and you start to have some struggles and stuff that doesn't go right and then you have to actually develop your own uh, understanding of the faith and uh, kind of see how that fits into your life because it's not going to be the same for my parents as it is for me. It's going to be different. It feels more real. It feels more like my relationship with God has been like a lot more different than just following what my parents have had for such a long time. But it's definitely a bigger part of my life than it was when I was living. There, there's been a lot of changes, um, gone through some rough patches like everyone does. It's, oh, it's, sometimes it's harder to find a way back than others, but somehow I've always managed to find a way back because I, I love my church and I love my youth group. Honestly, when I was a little kid, I was very skittish. I wouldn't even go up and talk to very many people, but I've realized, I've noticed that a lot of times, um, whenever I get nervous, I'll just think about how God has helped me out through the years and just, it helps me get through a lot of my difficult points. I think joining Young Life, like with my school, my freshman year really helped. And I think that now that I'm older, like God kind of leads my life instead of just being in it. I have seen um, how I worship change a lot. Um, I used to only praise the Lord in, in the highs, but now I cling to Him also in the lows and when I'm having trouble, especially in high school. Honestly, when I was little, I was sick. And afterwards, I found Christ and I gave myself to Christ. And after that, my family has continually been there for me and I think they have they have been the ones to help me grow in my faith. 
growing up in like a Christian household and being a pastor's kid, when I was younger, my faith was really just like my parents' faith, I guess. Kind of like, I mean, I've always heard like just piggybacking onto the parents, like holding onto their pocket type of thing. And really I was just kind of owning their faith. But you know, as I've grown and gone through high school and stuff, it's become more my faith, I guess. Over the past few years, it's not just um, based off my parents' faith, it's now my own. Um, and being able to grow um, and dig deeper in the Word on my own and not just um, hear it from my parents. One of my favorite memories would probably have to be the uh, San Diego trip because we all connected really well and we all had a really good time and we did a lot of good things out there but we also had a lot of fun. Some of the most fun I had was on all of the trips we've taken. Like we went to Chicago, we went to IYC in Indianapolis and we did another missions trip in California. So all of those and just being able to spend time with friends and serve were some of my best memories. Last year when we were in California, we had a silent walk on one of our last days to a local park. And it was just, just the silence. It was moving. OSYC, the Ohio State Youth Convention. I think it was in 2017 when I Am They, the band was there at Maiden Lane and it was packed and everybody was coming together praising the Lord. It was great. So I've been able to be on the worship team quite a bit and being able to worship and look out over the rest of the people also worshiping in the same way, raising their hands, um, looking up to the Lord. It's, it's really impactful and it's really cool to see. I'd say like one of my favorite memories was being on the tech team like by myself in the not really by myself but like running something by myself and being able to like command those who are running something else to I'd say just being like commander on switcher. Uh, some of my favorite moments, uh, running around the church while everybody else is setting up the living Christmas tree. <laughs> we used to do that back when they had that. Uh, playing basketball after youth on Wednesday nights, and then also getting baptized was one of my favorite memories a couple years ago. So Probably when I was baptized. Uh, the one would probably have to be when I was probably like five or six, maybe seven. Dorian Byers, we were playing basketball, and he went up for a shot, and he landed right on my face with his elbow and gave me a black eye. It'd probably have to be the uh, Bible boot camp when Pastor Patty was still there. Uh, Mike and Rob would always be threatening to drop us for like push-ups and stuff. And it was just a lot of fun seeing how they would make it engaging no matter what. One um, big thing that um, really opened my eyes is, I think it was one year at OSYC. During the time I was having a hard time, that time at OSYC, really the preacher spoke to me. Just the community there um, really opened my eyes and um, when I went home it was just like completely different. I mean the situation didn't change or anything, just like my perspective did and I was able to dig deeper and, and it opened my eyes. So. All right, so anybody who's still in student ministry, uh, take advantage of the time that you have. Uh, take advantage of the youth leaders, the youth workers, the pastors. They're there to help you, and trust me, it'll be over. You'll be done before you even know it. So just take advantage of it, enjoy it, show up every week, participate, all that stuff, because it's worth it in the end. So, and it's not you're not going to have exactly the same thing when you you know graduate from high school. So just enjoy it. Just staying actively involved, I'd say. I've had a lot of friends who have kind of come and gone over the over like youth experiences. And um, honestly, the biggest thing is just staying actively involved because that's the only way you can get a whole lot out of it. Uh, be grateful for every moment because it went a lot faster than I thought I would. Um, go to all the basketball games, go cheer on your football team. Just do things to make memories that will last a lifetime make sure you stay with your friends um, because they last a long time and they're always going to be there for you and just have fun with it too don't think everything too serious 
I'd have to say, if you want something, work for it, chase it, and don't ever give up. Because if you don't do any of those things, you will never go anywhere in life. Is if I speak with human eloquence and angelic ecstasy, but I don't love, I'm nothing but the creaking of a rusty gate. So that's just like 1 Corinthians 13, 1 right there. So you'd have to like live, live with love. I would say try to get as many, as much as time as you can in as possible. Try to do as much stuff with your friends and most importantly, be kind and helping to your small group leaders. Don't give up, it, it, it'll get easier. Just know that it's okay to not have everything planned right now. It's okay, because for the longest time, I didn't have a plan, and my plan isn't God's plan. So I get that mixed up a lot. So I would say to have a plan for yourself, but know that in the end, it's God's plan and what He wants will happen. Your situation doesn't define who you are, so, um, but Christ does. and. Um, because that's something that my mom has always said to me and it's really stuck with me because, I mean, life isn't easy, so. I guess I would just say that it's okay and like normal to have questions about your faith, but like it's also okay and you need to make sure that you're asking like an adult or someone you trust like about them just so you can keep growing.